Hi everyone, uh, this is Phil Travis, and uh, here we are, this is AMH 1020 here at SCF. Um, this week we are going to be looking at the Vietnam War. Um, the Vietnam War is an um, area of particular specialization for myself, actually. Um, it's an area of interest, it's always been an area of interest uh, in the past. I've actually taught a number of classes just on uh, the Vietnam War. Um, the Vietnam War is, uh, you know, is uh, you know a conflict that that had a great deal of impact in the United States, um, from how Americans look at the draft, how Americans look at the media and censorship during war, how Americans look at the treatment of of veterans, um, um, and so forth. There's numerous cases. Of this, the role of government of the government in surveilling Americans, um, the role of the government in uh, conducting wars and doing it with a great deal of secrecy and uh, uh, misinformation to the American people. It's really the uh, the Vietnam War that begins. I would suggest that begins a real deterioration uh, in the United States of the perspective of Americans. Um, you know, toward their government and particularly towards the office of presidency. And this is particularly caused by um, a great deal of misinformation uh, during the Johnson administration, which of course comes out in the Pentagon Papers, which was released in, by the New York Times and the Washington Post in the early 1970s. And then of course with Nixon, which took what Johnson was doing in terms of surveillance and harassment uh, to another level. And of course, uh, culminated in uh, you know Nixon's attempt to uh, surveil um, the Democratic uh, Party during the election of 1972 with the candidate George McGovern, and of course the bugging, the break-in and bugging of the Watergate office building uh, where the Democratic National Headquarters were. Um, but he had done many other similar types of things, um, and so the Vietnam War is a really, really, really uh, important moment uh, in terms of shaping uh, the United States, both how the United States wages war, how the American people think about the United States during a time of war, its responsibilities during a time of war, how Americans think about their own government are very much shaped by the Vietnam War. Our perspectives on the media, our perspectives on veterans, our perspectives on issues like the draft. Um, the United States, after Vietnam too, has made made a point to uh, fight wars in a manner which uh, minimizes the cost of casualties, um, because uh, the high level of casualties during <laughs> Vietnam was a huge. Um, boat of contention, and one of the core things that Americans were protesting was not only death in Vietnam, but of course also the draft and the usage of weapons like napalm, which were regarded effectively as chemical weapons. Um, um, so uh, the United States has since Vietnam, we had upwards of 60,000 Americans die in Vietnam, um, a number of casualties approaching 300,000 in a war that was fought uh, directly by Americans, at least, for almost a decade. Um, advisors were involved in the Vietnam War uh, longer than that. Um, but the war lasted for Americans fighting the war in the jungles, um, in the highlands, and in the deltas of Vietnam, um, as well as bordering countries like Cambodia and Laos. The war went on for almost a decade. And um, uh, uh, it was a war that seemed to have no real... Uh, there was no real way to, to measure success. It was very hard on the troops. The idea of post-traumatic stress disorder kind of becomes something that Americans become much more sensitive to as a result of Vietnam. Um, and ultimately, the United States withdraws from Vietnam and um, you know, ha effectively failed in its objective. Um, by 1975, the South was overrun by the North Vietnamese, and uh, Saigon, the southern city, was ultimately renamed Ho Chi Minh City um, as the objective during the war, which was to contain North Vietnam and keep South, Vietnamese, South Vietnam a non-communist state, um, really was not met. And the, the, the South would be conquered by the North in a conventional military offensive. Um, communist movements also took power in Cambodia, uh, the Khmer Rouge, that really filled the vacuum left when the United States pulled its support from the non-communist government there. Um, 
and the result was a massive genocide in Cambodia. So um, very interesting, fascinating subject and uh, a subject that is very, very relevant and significant you know, for Americans, the United States and the world today. Uh, this week we have, you've taken your second test, so that means your second paper option is due this week. Um, if you did not do paper option one, I really recommend you do the second paper option. Remember, we have three options, and you only have to do one of them, right? That's why I recommend, if you did, if you did the first one and you did fine in it, then you don't have to worry about this anymore. If you didn't do the first one, then right now, theoretically, you have a zero for the paper. Whether I've entered it as such or not, you have a zero for the paper. Um, so that means you're going to want to do paper number two uh, to cancel that zero out. Um, and if you don't do paper number two, then you really have to do paper number three. Um, but the second paper is due um, Sunday at the end of the week. I put a big list of guidelines on the papers up in modules this past week. So make sure you see that. Make sure you understand clearly uh, what you're doing on the paper. It's all outlined in those directions that I posted for you guys. So make sure you take a look at those. All right, uh, factoid for this week. Remember, to get your extra point, email me this factoid no later than Wednesday by midnight. The factoid is this. Uh, during the presidency of Lyndon Johnson, um, during, this, during his presidency, the United States, um, the United States uh, bombing campaign was referred to as Operation Rolling Thunder. And um, Operation Rolling Thunder um, was a significant bombing campaign of South Vietnam in parts of the southern portion of North Vietnam. But it was also a really, really highly limited bombing campaign. And the reason it was limited was because the United States was very concerned about the possibility of, um, of, of the conflict escalating into a wider war. Johnson was fearful that if you bombed high up in North Vietnam, you might antagonize the communists and they might invade uh, enter the war in the way they did during the Korean War um, a decade before. Um, there was great concern that if you had a, a, an American fighter pilot accidentally drop a bomb on a Soviet ship um, in, uh, uh, in somewhere like Haiphong in North Vietnam, that you might have an international crisis that could es escalate into a much larger scale war. Um, Johnson was also concerned with human rights issues. Um, he doesn't want to massively bomb the population of North Vietnam. He doesn't want to bomb around urban areas or city areas or um, dike systems in North Vietnam because of the humanitarian crisis that this could cause. And uh, the purpose of the war was really to use a limited conflict of containment. Our goal was to contain, South Vietnam, contain communism from North Vietnam and prevent South Vietnam from falling to communism. And uh, the Johnson administration, for this reason, sought to limit the bombing campaign um, only to aspects of troop support in the south, uh, infiltration routes uh, from the north that came through the Ho Chi Minh Trail from areas of Laos and Cambodia into the south, um, and as well as some infrastructure and uh, military type of installations in the southern areas of North Vietnam. So it was a limited bombing campaign. The factoid is this. Um, Johnson, uh, during the Rolling Thunder, they, they used to approve all of the all of the targets that would be bombed each week, and they would approve them at what were called Johnson's Tuesday luncheons. And uh, the idea with the Tuesday luncheons was that um, um, on Tuesday every week, Johnson and his advisors would all meet, and they would have a lunch, and they would confirm which were the acceptable targets uh, for the week. Uh, and this was, of course, a very flawed uh, way of going about a bombing campaign because, of course, it doesn't give you much ability to allow the people actually conducting the operations to make uh, decisions like about the best targets. But Johnson wanted to control the war. He wanted it to be limited, and he doesn't want it to be escalated. And this is the factoid. Johnson used to boast as he tried to sort of control the conflict – Johnson used to boast that uh, the Air Force could not bomb an outhouse in Vietnam without his approval. And uh, that was something he was very proud of. Uh, historians would look back and say that that was probably a real limitation of the effectiveness of the, of the air war in Vietnam. Uh, but Johnson would boast that they couldn't bomb an outhouse without his approval. 
All right, guys, let's have a great week. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't done the first paper, I really recommend you do the second one. Okay, guys.